A nurse approached me and said, why are you so upset? There was nothing to save. I lost a child. For me, it was a tragedy. When you come home and realize this loss, the feeling of grief is at its peak. They discharged me from the maternity hospital. Yanka was in intensive care. I came home and I felt that he would not come here. Such a strong feeling that he would not be here in this apartment. That was hard and very painful. How did you lose your child? Around 24, I got pregnant. Everything was fine. My pregnancy was confirmed. I was generally ready. At 11 weeks, I was on a bus and felt that I started bleeding. They took me to the hospital. And there, I was diagnosed with a miscarriage. As the doctor said, it was a missed miscarriage. My first pregnancy, all tests were normal. All indicators were normal. Over eight months, it was exactly the 35th week of pregnancy. There was very little time left before the birth. My belly started pulling. It was more like preliminary training contractions. And the doctor, to be safe, says, let's hospitalize you, either to give birth or to rest a bit and preserve. Before the weekend, everything was fine. They told me that on Monday, they would repeat tests and let me go home. It turned out that on Friday, I started feeling fewer movements. During the standard evening rounds, the on-call doctor listens with a stethoscope. I ask again, can you hear? She says, yes, everything is fine. It's audible. The next day, I also didn't feel movements, but I thought, I need to eat. I need to walk around. I moved, walked, didn't hear movements. I approached to call the on-call doctor. But there was an emergency surgery, the doctor was busy. As soon as they are free, the doctor will come to you, they said. Of course, I couldn't wait that long for the doctor, she practically took my hand right away. And literally, we ran to the maternity ward. The ultrasound didn't show a heartbeat, but she said, we'll still look. Eventually, the doctor said, there's a problem, can't detect the heartbeat, but it seems like something's coming through. So we will do a C-section, take you for surgery. They informed me that the baby was born dead. It was a girl and they couldn't find the cause. They just said it was a syndrome of sudden intrauterine death. Our little son Yanka was born on December 13th, four years ago, with the rather rare Patau syndrome, a disease that affects. One in 14,000 children are born with quite complex pathology. There are many different deviations. I think there was a heart problem. I don't remember exactly now. Our son lived eight days. We knew about Yanka's syndrome from the first ultrasound. The only thing the doctors didn't say was which syndrome it would be. But all the following ultrasounds, they only confirmed that the child would be sick. As believers, we decided that we would keep this child and in no way would we have an abortion. Although until the last day, even during childbirth, they convinced us and asked why we didn't have an abortion. Yanka was in intensive care. We came to visit him one more time, and they told us that he had died. What was your first reaction? After they performed that small surgery, a DNC, a nurse came up to me and said, why are you so upset? There was nothing worth saving. I lost a child. It was my first child, the one I wanted. Yes, it was still early in the pregnancy, but it was still a tragedy for me. At that time, they gave me a lot of sedatives. Initially, it was more of a physical and psychological shock. I can't say I felt a sense of loss or grief right away. I was just beginning to comprehend what had happened. My parents and relatives took care of the burial. I didn't see it. I was still in the hospital because the surgery was complicated. I wanted to see funeral. My mom just assured me that everything would be okay that they would take care of everything and tell me about it. I just wanted them to call me every five minutes, tell me what they were doing, how they dressed the baby. While I was in the hospital, I received enough attention. The doctors and psychologists visited and spoke to me very carefully and tactfully. 
There was a moment when I came home after being discharged from the maternity hospital, while Yannick was still in the ICU. I felt that he would not come here. It was a very strong feeling that he would not be in this apartment. That was difficult and very painful. We understood that we cried a lot, standing there in the intensive care. We also prayed, no, to accept that your child has died, especially in the beginning, no matter how much you prepare for it, is very difficult. If we had to make the choice again, we would choose in favor of the child and not have an abortion, because there is a very big difference between deciding to abort even a sick child and then wondering how sick the child would have been born, and between carrying it for nine months, then giving birth, spending eight days with it in love, baptizing it, and then burying it, like a person. When we buried Yannick, for example, there was a miracle that inspires us to this day. It was winter, December 23rd, and there was a rainbow over the cemetery. In the middle of winter, I had never seen anything like it. Did you feel guilty? At that time, we lived with my husband's family. And honestly, I felt defective since this happened to me. Like it was as if I couldn't handle it. I approached the nurse three times to call the doctor. Maybe I should have screamed. Maybe I shouldn't have trusted the doctor who listened in the evening because I felt that the doctor didn't hear the heartbeat. But she said, no, everything's fine. Maybe I should have insisted more. That's where I blamed myself for not being persistent enough. I can't say we blamed ourselves for our son having the syndrome. Rather, we wondered why it could have happened. How did you cope with your pain? My parents are quite reserved. And as for my husband, he definitely wasn't ready. When I told him I was pregnant, he was quite indifferent. And later, yes, I remembered asking him about it. He said, yes, he wouldn't have wanted a child at that time. So I dealt with it on my own as best as I could, alone with myself. Yes, I cried, I thought. It all led to depression. Because I noticed I was looking at women with children, with strollers, and it upset me. Talking about it now brings tears to my eyes. It means it still hasn't let me go completely. Why could they do it, and I couldn't? I can't say I did anything extraordinary to feel better. Simply, when I needed to cry, I cried. Knowing my husband was there to comfort me, helped. And we attended friends' celebrations, tried to live normally, but deep inside, we were profoundly affected. I think it became easier, or rather, less heavy, because time passed. About six months later. I wish there was a guideline given to you, like a leaflet saying, in the first month, you should visit a doctor, consult a psychotherapist. When you come home and realize the magnitude of your loss, the sense of grief hits its peak. You sit on the couch and remember sitting there two or three weeks ago, planning a completely different future, marking movements, making future plans, and your close ones around you feel the same. I started seeking such support from friends and relatives. For example, a friend would call inviting me to a club, but I'd realize it wasn't for me. Another friend might suggest a walk in the park, and that felt right. It took about two years before I began to feel emotionally and psychologically better. That's probably when the healing process started, when you began planning your life again, regardless of whether you'd have more children or not. Were you afraid when you got pregnant again? There were about two to three years between my first and second pregnancies. I was scared. My second pregnancy went well, positively. Yes, I must say, during the dangerous period, I was hospitalized for preservation. That period, around 11 weeks when I lost my first child, and then I gave birth to a perfectly healthy girl. She's almost 17 now. The fear never went away and still hasn't to this day. I'm grateful to the doctor who said everything would be okay in a month or a year and a half. So, for my peace of mind, let's just calmly prepare for a year and a half. Six years passed before I had another child. I was hospitalized twice during the pregnancy, without any objective reason, more out of my own anxiety. I had a girl, and then a second pregnancy followed, also a girl. Now I'm expecting a third girl any week now. 
We really wanted children again. I know it might be an unusual response, but during the next pregnancy, there wasn't a single moment of caution or fear that it would all repeat. Our boy, Franciszek, was born three years later. He's now a year old, and we plan to have more children. Did you tell your children what happened? My eldest daughter is nine years old, not quite the age to fully comprehend the situation. They know there is a burial site, they know a child is there, but they haven't asked questions yet. I haven't spoken about it until I see the question in their eyes. When that moment comes, of course, I'll tell them. When my daughter was about six, she woke up one day and told me about her dream. She said, Mom, I was flying through planets and worlds with my sister. It was a girl without legs, she said. It's hard to convey what I felt. She said, she smiled at me, held my hand, and we flew to planets where there are many children, some without hands, some without legs, but they are all alive, they live there. I shared this with her. She's very wise beyond her years. She said, now I understand. Yes, I guess it really was that girl who wasn't born. What would you advise those who have recently lost a child? You should try to continue living. It never leaves the heart. Yannick is always in our hearts. Many moments still cause pain to this day. They cannot be erased. I recently heard a phrase that time heals, but the challenge is not to die while healing. It's essential to cry because you must release the pain. And although you might not feel like it, it's important to seek a psychotherapist. There will be another pregnancy, and it will be different. It will be another child. Believe internally, support each other, and everything will work out. Look, it worked out for me.